Good morning. This is uh, May 30th, Memorial Day 2016. Um, Johnny C coming at you here. This is my first test with my new equipment, uh, Senna GoPro Pack, uh, along with the uh, Senna 3S wired headset inside my helmet. This first test is going to be with the external mic turned off uh, for no ambient noise. And we'll see what happens. I'm not real good at narrating as I ride because I've never done this before. So bear with me. If this video is good, I'll put it up on YouTube. Okay, here we go. It's a good day out for a ride. About 80 degrees already. Um, spring, uh, spring was cold and summer was a little while getting here, although it's not officially summer, but just the last week it's finally gotten nice to ride. You know, I was thinking about Memorial Day today, and um, as I always do um, this time of year. Um, my, my grandfather, Earl Keck, he was a um, he was a tail gunner on a B-25 Mitchell bomber. Now I'm not sure where he served at. There was most most of the B-25 squadrons were in the uh, in the Pacific War against Japan. So you know it would stand to reason that that's where he was. But as I think back, if he would have died, if he would have died in a mission, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I would have never been born as probably countless thousands, if not millions, of the rest of you as well. And, um, you know, we never want to forget what this day means, uh, what, what sacrifice these men gave to um, protect our freedoms here in the United States that some people seem to take for granted nowadays. I'm going to talk briefly about um, the president's trip to Hiroshima. I read that um, that not in 65 years has the U.S. president went to Hiroshima, let alone address the people the way he did. He went to uh, something they call a peace memorial. This was about, what, three days ago, two or three days ago. And um, he spoke about the dead, the lost over there in Japan. He, uh, he referred to the to the atomic bomb that we dropped as death from the sky. There's a lot of people that are calling it an apology. I haven't heard him. He didn't actually say he was sorry in the speech to the Japanese people, but if you listen, if you read the transcript of the speech, you can kind of tell um, that the whole, the whole theme of the thing was about an apology. Um, he made no mention of the American fighting men who died in the um, Pacific campaign against uh, the Japanese, who, by the way, were savages when it came to fighting. I mean, these people were ready to, to go to the death, whether they won or lost. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know about the kamikaze raids, the kamikaze attacks against uh, U.S. ships, um, where basically the Japanese pilots turned their airplanes into missiles and just attempted to fly them right into our our ships and some of them were successful and a lot of our men died just as a result of the kamikaze attacks toward the end of the war uh they got they got even more desperate you know nobody wants to lose a war but um the japanese people not just the soldiers the army but all the people the women the children they were all ready to fight to the death uh, in the event of a U.S. invasion on their on their homeland, and um, it would have been a really drawn out and bloody affair if we would have had to put boots on the ground and go house to house, building to building, and fight those people hand to hand. They they estimate that the uh, 
the little boy bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima killed about 140 some thousand Japanese citizens. Um, that death toll would have been possibly into the millions had we had to um, go fight them face to face. And if anything, I, lo I look at it this way, you know, they should be thankful, the Japanese people, the president, us, all of us, that we were able to come up with that bomb when we did. We, were, we did have the technology to do what we did. Because while, while 144,000 died, um, a million or more potentially lived. And um, now that's kind of the way I see, that's, that's my take on World War II and our, our war with the J Japanese. You know, the president, he, he, he's been bugging me about this for a while. He's, I remember in 2008 in a campaign speech he made before he was elected the first time against John McCain, he made reference to the fact that the United States has had it good for a long time and we enjoy our, our comforts here in this country and, um, and, and all the fossil fuels that we use to, to have those comforts like heating and air conditioning, you know, basic stuff that, that we've uh, had for a long time and have, you know, taken for granted. Um, but he mentioned, you know, he said, you know, some of the effect that, well, it's probably okay if the American people have to set their thermostats a little bit higher in the summertime and a little bit lower in the wintertime because we have to, uh, we have to save the planet. We have to be concerned about greenhouse gases. And uh, not to mention the fact he also says that that old cliche that the United States represents 5% of the world's population and uh, while they consume 23% of the world's resources, as if that's some kind of a bad thing. You know, he, he only says half the truth. You know, the other half of it is the fact that for those resources that we consume, we produce things that not only Americans want, but that the world wants. Um, you know, pioneering technologies in medicine and um, electronics, all, so all sorts of things that other countries of the world have a difficult time producing or, or can't produce at all. So, the way I look at it, instead of him hating us, president he ought to be thanking us and the rest of the world ought to be thanking us for the contributions we've made to help improve the lives of not just ourselves but of the entire world